Okay, this question states barium titanate is an important piezoelectric crystal. We are reminded that spontaneous polarization occurs below the Curie temperature, and we know that this polarization is due to ions shifting in the unit cell. Part A then asks, is the Curie temperature, you know, below the Curie temperature, is this going to be a cubic lattice or tetragonal? So let's start by drawing the lattice in the cubic state. If it's a cubic lattice, let's draw our a cations on these edges of the unit cell. We're looking right along one of the unit cell faces. So that's our A cations. These are plus two if it's barium, right? Plus two, plus two, plus two. That's our barium. Now let's draw the oxygen. The oxygen we know is centered on the faces, right? So centered right here would be an oxygen, 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 oxygen. Those are half in and half out. And then you're going to have oxygens on the front and back faces, so right in the center there. These are minus two oxygen. And then last, we have the B site cation. In this case, it's titanium. That's gonna be located in the dead center. So our B, that's titanium, and it's four plus, right? So if you look at this, everything is centered. There's no shifting of the ions. They're at their exact positions, so this must be cubic, obviously, and it must be above the Curie temperature. So this must be at a temperature above the Curie temperature. When these atoms shift, as is shown here in the diagram provided, now we've gone to tetragonal. The atoms have shifted. For example, the oxygens have shifted down. Each one of their positions has shifted down a little bit, whereas the titanium has shifted up a little bit. In that case, we break the symmetry. If you look at the unit cell, here, look at the lattice parameter. We go from 0 0.398, 0 0.398, but now in the vertical direction, it's been sh it's been stretched a little bit. By stretching it, that's made it tetragonal instead of cubic. So the first question is pretty straightforward. These are tetragonal. And that is a temperature below the Curie temperature. So that's part A. What about part B? Part B asks, what would be the polarization per unit cell and then on a per volume basis? So let's go ahead and do that. Per unit cell. Well, how do we know what polarization is? Polarization for a material, we can calculate uh, if we know the individual charge and how it's been shifted. So the polarization is going to be equal to the summation of each individual charge, so QI, multiplied by the distance that it's shifted, d sub i. So let's go on all of our different uh, cations and anions in this material that get shifted. Let's go ahead and add up the polarization contribution from each of them. Let's start with the oxygens. Oxygens, if you look at them, we have, um, we have the ones on the top and the bottom. Those are half in and half out. The ones on the left and the right, half in and half out, front and back. So all of those are going to contribute. Uh, do they all move the same amount, though? Let's look at the top. The top one and bottom ones, they move, they shift down by 0 0.009 nanometers. Whereas the ones on the side, they shift down by 0 0.006. So let's treat them separately. So the top and bottom, that's going to be 2 multiplied by 1 half each, since they're only half in and half out. They have a positive, uh, sorry, these are oxygen. So they have a negative 2 charge. So it's going to be negative 2 times the charge of an electron. And then they're shifted down by a negative distance of negative 0 0.009 nanometers, right? So that's the contribution from the top and bottom oxygens. Now let's do the other oxygens, right? There's now one, two, three, four of these things on the sides and the front and back. They're also one half in and one half out, so it's four times a half. They have the same charge, minus two, charge of an electron, right? But these are only shifted down by a negative 0 0.006, at least in this drawing that we've been given, negative 0 0.006 nanometers. And lastly, we need to account for the titanium. So let's add that term. This one, there's only one titanium atom per unit cell, so it's going to be one. It's completely inside, so just one times one. This is a plus four titanium ion, so it's going to be positive four fundamental charge multiplied by its shifting upwards, so it's going to be a positive 0 0.006 nanometers. So we can add all those up. Let's do so. When I add those up, I get the following. I find that it's equal to 0 0.066 
times the charge of an electron um, times nanometers. When we plug in the charge of an electron, which is just 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, then this tells me that our total polarization per unit cell is going to be 1.057 times 10 to the negative 29 coulomb meters. So I moved it out of uh, nanometers into meters. That's more convenient unit for us. So that is the polarization per unit cell. What about the polarization per volume? Well, we know what the unit cell is, so we can just take we can write the polarization is going to be the polarization from above divided by the volume of the unit cell. So let's go ahead and do so. It's going to be 1.057 times 10 to the negative 29 coulomb meters. We're going to divide this by, um, let's see, it's 0 0.398 nanometers, right? That's squared, because two of the sides are the same, multiplied by 0 0.403 nanometers. Let's convert nanometers to meters. So 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and that has to be cubed. When we plug all of that in, we find that our total polarization then, on a per volume basis, is going to be 0 0.165 coulomb per meter squared. Now maybe this is a little bit surprising. A polarization per unit volume, maybe you've you might have expected something like a coulomb per meter cubed, but remember polarization is a coulomb meter. When you divide that by meters cubed, you're going to end up with coulomb per meter squared. So what, you're, what this really tells us is that this is going to contribute a polarization on a per area basis, which gets to the last part of this question. Okay, let's move to part C. Part C says, if you use the sample in a parallel plate capacitor, what additional surface charge density would this material offer? you know, assuming complete polarization, compared to a parallel plate capacitor with just vacuum separation. So let's go ahead and draw that out. In a parallel plate capacitor, they look something like this. You have two parallel plates. You have a battery source. Let's put the positive side that way, negative side this way. So we're going to accumulate negative charge here. We're going to accumulate positive charge here. It's going to be equal to the amount of negative charge. So if that's under vacuum, we could do the same thing, but this time, instead of having a vacuum between our parallel plate materials, we can have a material in there, which is a dielectric material, which is going to enhance the amount of charge that we can put on these two surfaces. So for example, we could have lots more electric electrons there, much more negative charge, and much more positive charge over here, right, when you have a dielectric material. This assumes complete polarization. So something that's interesting to note here is that this polarization is coming from the material that we just drew. In this case, it was barium titanate, which we know that every little unit cell, right, if we drew this unit cell, it had a net polarization negative on the bottom and positive on the top. That allowed us to accumulate more, um, because each one of these unit cells is, is contributing that, that allowed us to put more negative charge on the top here, right? right? But if we draw multiples of these unit cells, each one of them is going to have a positive, negative, positive, you know, down here, negative, like so. These ones are going to cancel out, so those don't do us any good. But the negative from the very bottom unit cell, that will contribute to allow us to put more positive on there. So basically what that's saying is that only the very top unit cell and the very bottom unit cell actually contribute to the additional polarization. And this makes sense, because the units of polarization were in coulombs per meter squared. It's really just the surface area that's giving you an enhancement. The total surface charge density increase, which is what the question was asking for, D, is equal to epsilon naught times the electric field. That would be for va vacuum. And over here for dielectric material, it's going to be epsilon naught times the electric field. And this time it's going to be plus our polarization. So how much additional is it? Just the amount that we solve for in B. It's whatever the permittivity of free space uh, surface charge density is going to give us plus whatever contribution comes from this. And again, this is assuming that the material completely polarizes, which may not be the case, but in this question, that's what they asked for.